Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Scalabro Country, the virus edition, a.k.a. the Pandy Pods. A.k.a. Two Sons, No Guns. Oh, that was good. A.k.a. Rising Stars in Hollywood, So Sklar, So Good. Okay. A.k.a. Bricked Nut Houses and Tricked Out Houses. Okay. A.k.a. Comedies, Standalone, Sklars, and Baritone Stars. These are all Mike Huddleston, a.k.a. the a.k.a. guy, a.k.a. Old Zealand, a.k.a. Huddletron, a.k.a. Huddlestein. Thank you, brother. Here we go. Uh, I hope you guys are doing well. Middle of the week. Middle of the week. We are hurtling towards Election Day. Make your plan to vote and do it. Vote, 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 vote. Vote. If you think today, if you think it's end of days, we're going to jump into this story right now. Which I do. And end of times, then this is a story that will only confirm that thought in your brain. There you go. Okay, this next story is for you. Before we get into it, I never thought the end of days would have such good TV. Yeah. I'm just going to say this right now. If you are not watching the TV show, The Great. I'm not. It is on Hulu. Jason, you need to watch it. I will. Everyone out there, you need to watch it. I was a little skeptical at first. It's by the same, I think, writer who did the movie The Favorite, and I love The Favorite. Right. Emma Stone. Um, really, really good. I just love the incongruency of language versus time period time period and anachronism and they basically were like we're not going to be 100 percent truthful but we're going to capture the mood of the time and we're going to use modern day colloquialisms to kind of and the way we speak to fill it in so it's more palatable and it was like i never go in for old time period piece stuff this is incredible you're all in i'm all in it is so good it is so damn good i want you i want everyone to watch it all right let's get back to the end of our world in case the great ending you were looking for some biblical sign out there that the world is coming to an end, we give Here you this story. Okay. Andrew Orkin. Is that the guy who, who gets rid of bugs in mm-hmm. your house? Well, he gets rid of some pests, and then he's confronted with some pests okay. right here. Was taking a break from his evening jog to sit by Prospect Park Lake when he turned around and was startled to see a tangle of wriggling snakes. In Brooklyn. Prospect Park is in Brooklyn. A tangle of wriggling snakes. This Not is the in, end this of is time. in Paducah, Kentucky, or West Texas. This or is Louisiana, Bro- down on the bayou in the swamp. Where you, where you see a pile of snakes and you're like, yeah, yeah that's, that's a pile of snakes. You walk by the pile of snakes part of the tour. Of the pile of snakes tour. is terrifying, but that's not what this was. Think about that, Jade. Pile of snakes, you can at least explain. Yes. This, you can't explain. What is it? Quite a big pile, fully alive, said Orkin, a music composer who lives near Brooklyn Park. What does that have to do with anything? What does the fact Unless that he's this- going to write a song about it and we're yep. going to hear it. Don't Had tell to us. get in that he was a music composer, didn't Make he? Make sure you, they say music composer on there. Did but he, have you written anything? It's did like, he I'm write the score for this scene called Pile of Snakes in a Brooklyn Park? Pile of snakes hey. in a Brooklyn Park. Even if they were just snakes, that would be weird. But explainable, like we said. Turned out to be eels. A pile of eels that has escaped from one of two large plastic bags that split open as a man dragged them to the shoreline. What What the F is going on? A man was dragging a plastic bag full of eels. Full stop. Let's think about that for this. Guarantee you they should not have been dragged. Guarantee you they should not have been in a plastic plastic bag. bag. Wait, burlap sack maybe. Come on, let's get let's get 1930s on this. This is like a guy on the corner of the park was like, "Hey, yo, man, you want some eels?" No, I don't want eels. Come here, man. You can get anything in New York City around a corner. Around a corner goes around a rock. Comes back. Opens his jacket and a bunch of eels. Bag of eels. Opens his side Rolexes. Give me three. Give me three. Is this God? That's my question. Can we? Is it? Is this the way God is now? Do- if it's not God, is this the way he or she is doing plagues? Just a few at a Guy time. Guy in a plastic, drags plastic bags and leaves a bunch. There, you got the plague of eels that's happening well, right now. Well, at least a pile of eels didn't just show up in Brooklyn. Yes, they did. A man dropped them out of plastic bags. To me, that's the way God drops eels up in this piece. Yes, drag them. Drag, drag the, the plastic. Like when my kids drag a thing that they're supposed to be you're carrying. Like, Don't stop it. You're going to ruin this. Why are you doing this? If you saw a pile of snakes and then, Jay, you found out that they were eels. And again, you're in Brooklyn. 
you would think that something has gone wrong or this is a sign that this something is a mafia is a, move. This is a mafia, mafia move, move sending a message to someone else. You're going to sleep with the eels tonight. Gotta talk to Fat Tony. Hey, I talk to Fat Tony. You gotta Again, sleep with the eels tonight. Really important that the guy who found them identified himself as a music composer. I cannot stress enough. Well, it, the story hinges on his ability, <laughs> ability to, to compose, compose music. music. After dumping the eels in the lake, the man walked away explaining to bystanders that I just want to save some lives. What? What? Now I really feel eels, like he's got... Eels' lives, I think. I think he means eels' Who's lives. Who's he saying? The lives of the animals? The lives of animals. Other, it's the animals. Other people? This is a metaphor for this our is, country's failed coronavirus policy, don't you yes, think? Agreed. We need yes. to save the eels. But we what about all the people and other species you kill by dropping the eels in the park? Who cares about them? We got to save the eels. Save them. The illegal... No, we got to release the eels. That's like opening up the country. Just release the eels. Mm -hmm. The illegal release late last month became a curiosity on social media, but the dumping of exotic animals in urban parks is not a new thing, Jay. Oh, my God. In cities across the country, non... Non-native birds, turtles, fish, and lizards have settled in with disturbing. They, they, it's like the Simpsons when the frogs came from Australia and they and they ruined the ecosystem. It's not good for ten thousand parrots just to hang out in the Bronx. No, do you know what I mean? They'd rather be in Borneo, not the Bronx. New Yorkers free thousands of non-native animals every year. Many of them are abandoned pets that quickly die. Yay. Yay. Bad. But others can survive, reproduce, and end up causing lasting harm. Yay. Yay. Worse. Again, by just letting the animal free, this is the ultimate in short-sightedness. Yeah. Well, I did my part. I let it free. It's you out know, of my hands. To clap, me, this clap, is like clap. shooting a gun up in the air. You think the bullet's not going to come down? It's just going to get lodged up in a cloud? It's not going to come down and hurt somebody? It could come down, down and hurt somebody. It's coming down. You idiots. People like animals, and they sometimes think they're doing a good thing by letting them go, said Jason Munshi South. Or it's like if you and your your own, you recognize in yourself the inability to take care of an exotic pet because you live in a city. Yeah. You shouldn't have gotten in the first place. Should, number Again. one, should have gotten in the first place. Number two, go to a place that can handle this. How are eels in a park a good thing. It's not other than for the guy who got rid of the eels that he had and didn't want them anymore. Right. He's the only guy who benefits. He's the from only this happy person in this yeah. whole thing. The eels don't like it. No. The other species don't like it. Anyone no. who rolls it, you push it a baby stroller and there's a pile of eels, you're going to freak out. <laughs> New York state and city officials say it's too soon to know how the eels in Prospect Park might affect local species, but based on photos taken by bystanders, of fish bystanders, officials identified them as swamp eels native to Southeast Asia, like those that have been found in at least eight states. And we've learned anything from the coronavirus that things from Asia that make their way here are usually pretty harmless. Yeah, safe bet. Once introduced, often after being purchased at local live fish markets, officials say the eels eat almost everything, including plants, insects, crustaceans, frogs, turtles, and other fish. There are problems. You're in, you're, it's unless, like, unless you're barbecuing them and putting them with rice and seaweed and avocado, don't, don't do, do it. Don't do it. Department of Rex and Wildlife Unit, they're so mad about this. How do you get them there? So great to drag a bag of eels across the park. And again, dummy. maybe I would say put them in a Yeti cooler so they don't just completely fall out. Or just don't set them free. Don't set them free. Or give them to a sushi restaurant, right? Chop them up. You know, don't have them in the first place, okay? Don't. This is me telling you, if you're dragging eels and dropping them off in a park, you don't get pets. You don't deserve pets. You've lost the right. Yeah. And it's okay for us to tell you. By the way, it's everybody's right to have a pet. You lost that right. Yeah, you forfeited it. If you're dragging them in a plastic bag. There are no plans to eradicate the eels since they're nocturnal and spend most of their time burrowed in the sediment of lakes, rivers, marshes. Spotting and removing them could be impossible. This is a metaphor for Trump in America. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Yes. This kind of species is a little tricky. They're well hidden. We're not going to go out there and try and trap any of them. You can't. You can't do it. Without having witnessed, oh my God, the release, officials from the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation, which is the investigating the incident, could not specify the number of eels. So now we don't even know how many eels Meaning there are. that this could just be some of them. Right. And the other ones made it all the way to the release. Bystander describes seeing more than 100 of them. More than 100 of them. My favorite time in New York, Jay, from when we lived there the eels for five out. years. Eels come out, 
when they start changing colors. Yeah, when that's when you know because you're just like, oh my hey, god, the eels are so beautiful. In New York. DC officials say they will look for swamp eels during the agency's next survey in the spring, but don't expect them to make it through the winter. Okay. All right. However, the University of Toronto freshwater ecologist Nicholas Mandrake. To me, Nicholas Mandrake is the type of Bond villain that would say release the eels. I wonder if his name Doesn't was he? just Nicholas Mann, but he added Drake because he's from Toronto. That's maybe. That's just my thought. Like release the release the eels into Mr. Bond's bed. Mandrake. 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 If some of the Prospect Park transplants survive for a few years, climate change could feasibly warm up city waters enough to render them hospitable for swamp eels. Oh, boy. Hopefully, we freeze them out. Mandrake. Then send in the sushi restaurants. How, how much can we not? This is what has to happen. I do love a good eel avocado roll. We shouldn't come to immediate conclusion that they're, that because they're found in Asia, they couldn't survive in New York. Yeah, lots of things from Asia can survive in New York. Do you not understand? They can. They will survive and destroy everything in the park. The eels are out, and there's no turning back. The eels are out of the bag on this, Jay. Yeah, they, they, someone let the eels out Again, of the bag. Again, accountability. You have eels. You want to release them in the park. That's not your call. That no. park is other people's things, other people's property, public property. That's right. Get yourself a pond and stick the eels in your own pond and ruin your own ecosystem. Put them in your bathtub and live with them. There you go. And that is our first story. There you go. Let's take a break. When we come back, uh, you know what? I've, I, I will not lie. COVID benefits have helped many people that we but know. when you raise money or when you kind of fraudulently money. Fraudulently. They, it, in a time when people are giving money to help people. It's going to come back and bite you in the ass. And we have a great story about that on the other side. Uh, this is Clubbro Country, the virus edition. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Uh, we got our live Dumb People Town on November 7th. You, look, the election's on November 3rd. I don't know what's going to happen. We don't. But here's the you're only thing. You're either going to be celebrating, you're going to be miserable, or you're going to be living in an unknown that is terrifying. Either we way, got we you got covered. you covered for a couple hours on that night, Saturday night, November 7th, 6.30 West Coast. John Hamm, Ham, the band Tennis, Dan Van Kirk, and me and Randy. Eventbrite.com. Look up live Dumb People Town. Get your tickets now because they are selling out and they're going to start. There are only a couple weeks left. They're going to start selling out. That Last week, as we go into that, with any tickets left, they're gone. All the VIPs are gone. There's only a handful of pre-show uh, meet and greets. It was so much fun to ask anybody who went on those. Blast. Tweet it out. It was so much fun. So get those so now. So that, we got a YouTube page, Sklar Bro Country. Subscribe to that. Tool around there. It's fun. And go to our Facebook page, uh, Sklar Brothers. Just join it or like it, like it so that it. we can get those up there. And we're posting videos with some interesting stories about the clips that we're posting, kind of like DVD commentary. Check that out. We're posting those on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays on the Facebook page. Uh, and that's it. Let's jump into this final right. story. So we we've done our fair share of COVID benefits. Yeah, it's what we try. It's what we do to try and help out. Yeah, it's important to help frontline workers and people who need the help. We're right. not flush with enough cash. I wish we could just. I give wish them we could just say, money. "Hey, we're going to give a ton of money." This thing we can't do that, but we can do a comedy show that can raise a lot of money. Sure, that's what we do, and that's, that's how we do it. So that's what we do. We aren't in that position, but we are in the position to raise money. That's what we do. And when it happens, and it's right, it feels really good. I can say that, Rand. Don't you think but so? What happens? when a benefit is a fraud or when somebody uses, uses the benefits, benefits that are for people increase. in a fraudulent nature then it doesn't feel so good it's like a a, a fire fest for the government or for philanthropy all right let's here we it. go a rapper known as nuke bizzle nuke bizzle was arrested on friday for alleged unemployment benefits fraud a i want scheme, a scheme. i want his alter ego to be book nizzle book nizzle nuke bizzle after he boasted about that type of fraud in a YouTube music video, according to the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Central District of California. Okay. Rule number one, if you're involved in unemployment benefits fraud, don't brag about it. Yeah. Don't brag about it. Maybe don't do it online. Maybe don't do it in a rap video. What rhymes with fraud? Broad. Thawed. Sawed in half. Oh, my God. Yes. Oh, oh my, my God. God. Yes. Broad. Oh, my God. Yes. Oh, oh my, my fraud. fraud. Bizzle, whose real name real name is Fontrell Antonio Baines, which I contend is better than Nuke Bizzle. Lil Fontrell? Come on now. Are you kidding me? Lil Lord Fontrell Baines? I'm into that. Baines, 31, was arrested for allegedly obtaining fraudulent unemployment insurance benefits under Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act, or the CARES Act, according to the release form of the U.S. Attorney's Office. Wow. Their release states that Bizzle allegedly... 
I mean, every time I say Bizzle, Bizzle. it makes me happy. It's so fun. Allegedly applied for $1.2 million in jobless benefits and used stolen identities according to the release. Wow. Whoa. That is crazy. That's making it rain government money. That's making it hail government money. Bizzle is accused of exploiting a provision in the CARES Act called the Pandemic Unemployment Assistance, which expands across to unemployment benefits to those who would otherwise be eligible for the benefits. This includes self-employment workers, independent contractors, according to release. Don't I, am, am I wrong here? But don't rappers always brag about how much money they have? How they came from nothing to make it to the top. Now we live in homes in unfamiliar places. Isn't that a, how, isn't that a how notorious does, B.I.G.? Yeah, how does unemployment fraud work its way into that rap. I, I don't know. The affidavit states that Baines used debit cards that had been preloaded with unemployment benefits from the California Employment Development Department. C-E-D-D. The EDD. The, EDD. Uh-huh. the cards used by Bizzle were allegedly For issued- shizzle, my Bizzle. In other people's names, including those who were victims of identity theft, according to the release. Come on now. here You got to write rhymes for that. Gonna snatch your identity. You ain't a friend of me. Got my loaded debit card. I'll see your ass in the yard. Okay. So we're writing basic raps for you. We're Children's raps. 92 debit cards, 92 were sent to an address linked to Bizzle with more than 1.2 million in fraudulent obtained benefits. This is crazy. Yeah. Bizzle and co-conspirators were able to allegedly access more than $704,000 of the benefits according to release. Uh, he got to give that back. Yeah. Well, I'm sure he hasn't spent any of it. So, so that should be easy to recoup. That'll be easy to recoup. Easy to recoup. And a uh, way to send them all to the same address. Did nobody catch that? He was ban- what he was banking on was government incompetence, which is right. And with he would have current administration. That's a safe bet. And he would have gotten away with it too if it weren't for you meddling kids. I mean, if it weren't for his rap song online. Prior to his arrest, Bizzle under the usernames Nuke Bizzle One and Nuke Bizzle Twenty Three. Should have gone with Book Nizzle. That's Book all I'm Nizzle. saying. Book Nizzle posted videos to his Instagram account and on YouTube, in which he bragged. By the way, we have a YouTube page. Yeah, which he bragged about defrauding benefits programs in a music video. <laughs> this is insane. Weirdest brag. Like Weirdest, it is a humble brag. It's the strangest government flex I've ever seen. In the video, he holds up a wad of envelopes. From the EDD. That's right. Employment Development Department. And claims he got rich by going to the bank with these el- envelopes. Stop. Likely a reference to the debit cards that allegedly been sent to him. Yeah, because you don't go to the bank with those. They put it on the card, but that's a and whole other thing. you can spend thing. it anywhere. It's one thing to hold up wads of cash and to claim that it's from the government. But to hold up government envelopes, you got to be- You just got to be- It's like a special kind of dumb to just put that out there into the universe. And- there's only one way to get that many envelopes is to have a bunch of fraudulent cards. Another rapper in the video states, you got to sell cocaine. I just file a claim. That's okay, better than I like rhymes. that. That's I actually like that. That's good. I guess when you put it that way, though, versus selling cocaine, it is less dangerous to society. What yeah, he's doing. True. True. Uh, okay. If convicted. If convicted. Take it. <laughs> Bizzle could face a maximum sentence of 22 years in federal prison. It was not immediately clear if Bizzle had retained an attorney. I think he should have to be represented by the government. Yes. Give him a, like one of the, just a government attorney. Keep it in the fam, so to speak. That's right. Just if a, you can. A pencil pusher. Keep it simple. It, is it, this, this whole thing begs a good question. Is it better to pull off a defrauding by itself or to pull off a government defrauding and then to brag about it? Yeah. If you just pull it off. That's one thing, but I feel like people feel the they need to. They won't know. They won't. You know gotta how you brag got it. about it. Exactly. They, they'll think you got you, it from a record label. They'll think that you earned the money to buy that Lambo. And, and that essence, does not take into account how hard you work to defraud the government for those ninety-two debit cards. You gotta let them know. You okay. gotta let them know. It's like coming from the streets and having people think you came from the suburbs. You gotta tell. You people. gotta tell people so they know. If you don't, even know, if it incriminates you, if you don't know, now you know. That's part of the rap game. You gotta get. You gotta be your own evidence against, against yourself. yourself in a court case. That's it. You gotta be holding up exhibits A through X. It's almost like photos, or it didn't happen. Unemployment envelopes, or it didn't happen. That's what the rap game is all about. Proof. Here's your proof right Photos here. Photos, or it didn't happen. Unemployment envelopes, or you did not defraud the government out of unemployment, unemployment benefits. benefits. Nuke, Nuke Bizzle, Bizzle, Book, Nizzle. Lil Fontrell, I think, is way better than Nuke Bizzle. I <laughs> Figure just it out, Nuke Bizzle. Dude, I, 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 it's, it's the, the hubris behind it is kind of amazing. It is definitely revolutionary, and he got caught. 
I'm but, sorry you got caught, but I'm telling you, if he if he goes to jail, he becomes the guy. Like he should be DJ. His DJ should be DJ Loophole. DJ Loophole. DJ Loophole. Bring Spin him Spinning this story in ways that you never thought possible. DJ Loophole and Nuke Bizzle defrauding the government, writing raps, and spinning this story in ways you never thought possible. And that is a that is a show. There's a show. That's what we got for you. That's how we do. I want you guys to uh, take care of yourselves. We're midweek. Uh, let's finish this week strong. Again, stay connected, stay protected. Don't get infected. Uh, this is not a hoax. But we've got the jokes. Wear a mask, everybody. Please find a way to vote. If you haven't voted already, get your votes in. You can do it now. Check and make sure that you can. Then drive someone else to the polls. Be that person to help someone else vote and do it so that we get everybody voting. Uh, we love you guys, and we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> La ti ta ti ta ti ta La ti ta